This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching in the state of Georgia, and I've brought today's video. It's the completion of two of the projects that you've been watching. One of those is the Up the Ladder Lap Quilt, and the other one is the Bowtie Brain Cheeser. As you can see, I've got the lap quilt, the oversized lap quilt, laying on the dining room table. And it will be nice to cover somebody up, not just to sit in their lap. This was the one that had the strips that ran straight across, and some of them were two, four, and six inches wide. So there were challenging, challenges for getting ready to do some decorative stitching on the top. All of my finishing stitches were done on the sewing machine with uh, a quilting foot, a ruler foot. Most of my work used to be done by hand because I'd sit in the evenings after working at school and sit and quilt. And I'd have to come up with my patterns and usually I could just sit there and draw a shape and then stitch it and keep going. But when I changed over to working on the machine, I needed to have a little more control about where I was going to go with the pattern. And I went through a lot of stages. I used tissue paper. I used transparency film. I used shower curtains. And then finally, for this one, I'm using just plain old paper to decide what I wanted to do. And what I actually did was I cut the paper to the size of the strip that I wanted to do. So I've got some two inch, some four inch, and some six inch. And then started working on that. And on a very rainy night, it didn't take long to come up with some plans. And, and looked in my book for ideas too, just didn't come out of my head. So here's where we ended up. In a narrow one, I have just leaves, graceful leaves. And they run all along that column. Well, it's actually that row going across. Going up the sides, I wanted to do something different. So this was a neat, neat one that I had seen. And I've practiced it on some other quilts. And so it was one that traveled really fast. Any of these would be great for hand stitching and, and, um, on a quilt. And then I have to have some of my feathers. And I kept looking for a good place for feathers. And here's where they ended up. That nice green strip in the middle. There's where I had an idea of how they could fit in there and did them in sections. You don't want a feather that runs all the way across, probably. Although this one does look like I went a long way before I stopped off on, on that. And there again, I used the paper. Probably the trickiest one was the six inch one. And I looked at it and looked at it and I really liked the pattern the material was. And I thought, I don't want to distract, take away from that. But at the same time, I don't want a six inch piece of fabric flapping around. So I started, and actually this one I did, I just started doing the lines going one way and then I'd start at the top and then I'd go the other way. And you just have to think about it a little bit and you do it. And then when I got done, I went ahead and added it to my book so that the next time I need, there's six inches, I know something that will cover that and break the area up really well. And down in the corners, I just did a nice lattice. That's a great way to fill up a space. In the back, it's harder to see the pattern this time, but if you hold it in the light just a certain way, you can see the patterns, and that really looks nice. And don't forget to put a label on the corner of your quilt with a date. The second quilt was the Bowtie Brain Teaser with the prairie points around the edge. For this quilt, I had 8-inch squares. One looks like the solid cream, which was the four squares put together, and then there was also a four square section that was made up of the colored fabrics, your patterns. So I cut out some eight inch squares, and let me show you about what I came up with, because here I did think about it before I started, and I made reference lines, and I did that, and I did a folding, so I know where half was. 
That was one. There was another one. And if you ever doodled, you would like doing this also. It's kind of fun just to see what you can come up. And that was one of my favorites. I didn't use that one, but I'm going to save it for later. And then when I started breaking, I wanted to break up my squares that had the four fabrics in them. I looked at something like this. And I actually ended up doing this one right here in the corner in all four blocks. And it was really nice because if you work at doing continuous lines, it really lent itself to that. And then if you wanted ruler work, which I wasn't going to do because it was going to be a lot of work on here, but there would be example of ruler work. And this is one of my favorite ones that I got offline because when you finish with it, it looks so good. So let me show you what I ended up with. Because of the borders on this quilt, I ended up with a pretty nice sized quilt. Not huge, but nice enough to lay over the bed and to get a look at all of the colors. And you can see which pattern I finally used when I got ready to do the cream squares. And I could do that whole thing as a continuous thread. That was fun. And then when I got to the four blocks, you can see where I picked that um, pattern with the scallops. And I could there again, that one I could do as continuous. But it, sometimes I changed the thread because I didn't want the th thread to dominate the box and the color. And then over there is, are the prairie points. And I did find out that when I went around and put this layer right here of stitching, that helped hold the points up. Remember what I talked about before about maybe putting buttons in there, and I still might do that. But that row of stitching helped hold it up. And then again, when I got ready to do the border, I picked that one that I really liked and ran it all the way around and then did some feathers in the corner down there. When the sun hits the quilt just right, you can see some of the work from the front showing up on the back. To get a perspective on the size of this quilt, it's laying on a king size bed. It looks like I did a lot of thinking to work on this quilt. You have to remember that I am retired and I've waited a lot of years to have time to stay home and do things that I really love to do, like quilting. This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe.